I have filmed this intro or tried to film this intro. I don't even know how many times so far. So not gonna lie to you, what I did is I wrote it out and it's attached to my tripod. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing. Um, hi, my name is Anna and this is Anna's Books and Stitches and welcome to my very first floss tube. Um, this channel is going to be predominantly about cross stitch and I will also occasionally share books that I've been reading or finished and possibly other fiber arts that I have been working on. I have been watching floss tube for a while, um, since I got back into cross stitch in September, and I have been wanting to film my own for a couple of months now. Um, but I live in the United States for anybody watching outside of the US, and tax season just got over, and I'm an accountant, so I figured I'd wait until after. And it's after, so here we are. Um, first, I guess I should probably tell you a little bit more about myself. I am 35. I live in Portland, Oregon. I am a mom of two middle schoolers. I am going to school full time and I am working full time, so I'm very busy. But I always make sure to find time to do the things I enjoy, like cross stitch. Um, I have been cross stitching off and on since I was probably eight or nine when my mom taught me and I really got back into it. Like I said, in September when Facebook decided to randomly suggest a cross stitch group and I joined and the rest is history. Um, in today's video, I am going to show you the one finish I have managed to do since I started again in September. And then we're going to go through my whips. And at the end, I am going to show you a little bit of haul because I went to Acorns and Threads this morning and I'm excited. So, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so my finish. Um, this is a pattern by Craft with Cartwright. It was a free pattern that I got from an email or something. I can't remember. But, um, I started this in December, December 7th, for my sister for Christmas. And there we go, now you can see it all. Um, I finished it almost exactly three months later on March 8th. And yeah, it's on a 32 count white Murano that I got from somewhere. I don't even remember where. And it is all done in DMC 3750. You can't really tell, but it's a deep navy blue. I think it's called like dark delft blue or something like that. But it's for my sister. She has a um, all white and blue Christmas room. She's obsessed with Christmas. Um, so I figured it would be perfect for that. So yeah, this is the one finish I have been able to manage since September. Um, as you'll see, I kind of enjoy doing bigger projects. Uh, yeah. Okay, on to my whips. So whips means work in progress um, for anybody that doesn't know. And I'm gonna start with the oldest and work my way through them to the newest. I have less whips than I actually thought I did. I have 10, I think it is, nine or 10, can't remember exactly. Um, I thought it was way more than that, but apparently not. Okay, so my first whip I started in, this was the first one I started when I got back into stitching. Um, I started it in September on the 11th and it is the Haunted Library. Um, as you can see, I haven't gotten very far on this. Um, I stitched on it pretty religiously um, in the beginning because it was really the only project I had. But um, yeah, I haven't gotten very far. It is done on a 18 count oatmeal fiddler's cloth. And I am doing two over one. That means two strands of thread over one, um, whatever, one box. It's easier to explain when I have 
linens or even weave because it's, but it's Ada. So Ada is almost always done over one. Um, get really close, you can kind of see the little boxes. Um, but this project <laughs> has given me a lot of issues. Um, I can't remember what, I think it was at the top of the stairs um, in that section in the middle. For whatever reason, I could not count. I couldn't figure it out. And so I created the project and it helped. But when I picked it up again recently, I was confused because my counting wasn't right, but on the grid, but it was working with the rest of the project. And I realized that I gridded it wrong. <laughs> it's off by one, the entire grid. I don't know when or how the, um, the horizontal stripes are all off by one. I don't know when or how it happened in the gridding process, but whatever. I don't need the grid anymore because I've got the base done. So yeah. Um, this is, like I said, it is The Haunted Library by Lola Crow. Um, you can find her on Etsy, but she also has her own website now. I will link it in the description box down at the bottom. Um, and I'll also put a picture of the finished project here, hopefully, if I can figure it out. Um, uh, yeah, so that is Haunted Library. The next project is, um, I got a set of kits when I first was getting back into it because I wanted something. It's before I really figured out too much in depth with Etsy and ordering and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but I ordered this on Amazon. So, you know, how House of Bezos, but you know, whatever. It's a kit. Let me get my face out of it so you can kind of see. There we go. Um, it's a kit. It's a printed kit. That I got, but it's going to be beautiful. Um, yeah. Okay, I started this one on September 29th. It's 11 count Ada. Um, I've never been a huge fan of the, the big Ada. Um, 16 count is generally what I don't like to go above, below. Smaller numbers bigger squares, whatever. Um, but this is this 11 count and come on. I mean, it works. It's really great for, um, I'm gonna wanna turn my brain off and just stitch, but it's gonna be cool when it's finished. Um, it's kind of allowed me to try some new techniques. I tried parking for a while on it and then I've tried, um, working in columns and working in, in horizontals and box at a time and color completion and you know, all of that. So this has been nice. It was a good way to kind of get me back into cross stitch. But I haven't worked on it a whole lot just cause um, the, the squares are just so big, it kind of bothers me. Um, the next one is, Move Forward in Love by Modern Frilk Embroider. I will put a picture here of what it will look like when it's finished. Um, I am doing this on a 32 count Zweigart Lugana in lavender that I got from Millions of Stitches on Etsy. Um, I started this on December 20th and I haven't gotten super far because I started it and I was excited about it. And then I just stopped working on it. Who knows? But so I've got just that, not a whole lot, but you know, I like it. It's gonna be good. I'm excited about the color combination and I am doing this all in DMC, all of the call for DMC. Um, I got the pattern on the Modern Folk Embroidery website. I love their stuff. It's just amazing. Um, but for whatever reason, this is the only Modern Folk Embroidery piece I have right now. So yeah, it's a good one. I'm excited about it and I can't wait for it to be finished. Um, the next one was my new year, new start. So I started on January 1st and it is the... 
Goth Temperature Cell by Grandma B. Wilden. You can find her on Etsy. Um, all of these shops that I'm talking about, I will um, try to remember to link down in the description box so you can kind of go take a look and see how awesome the rest of their patterns are. Uh, but Grandma B. Wilden, she is the creator of this and it is the Goth Temperature Cell. And I'll put a picture here. And this is on a 28 count Picture this plus Lugana in the colorway Mirage. It's actually one of my favorite picture this plus colorways. It is gorgeous. You can't really tell. Let's see if I can get a good. That's pretty true. Um, it's got a lot of purple on the undertones, which I am in love with. Purple's my favorite color. Um, I've got it on my nails right now. Uh, but so this is the Goth Temperature Cell. I um, haven't gotten a whole lot done. You can kind of see I've gotten the top half of the bookshelf, of the black at least, a little bit of the white. There's some screw ups in the top because I can't count, but it's gonna be good. Can't tell, so I'm not gonna point them out. I started this, like I said, January 1st, and I got the material at Acorns and Threads. Um, my local needle store, which I'm sure most of you have heard of. But yeah, that is Goth Temperature Cell. Okay, the next one I didn't take out of the hoop because it's got like two yards, of, not two yards, but like two feet by four feet or something stupid of fabric. Um, so I left it in the cute snap, not the cute snap. I use Nerd Tubes because they're amazing. They're rectangular. They hold tension really well, they're light, and I love them. So this is the beginning of Gen 1 Pokemon, the extended version. I am not doing the, um, the background because why? Um, but I am obsessed with that little Bulbasaur. He's my favorite. I normally I'm a top left stitcher, but I started bottom left because I had to start with the starters. I mean, look at the little bulbs or look at the little teeth. It's so freaking cute. Um, so I'm a Gen 1 Pokemon and it's actually a free pattern on, online. You can just search for Lord Libidon. I think that's how you pronounce it, Lord Libidon. I don't remember. Um, he's got, they've got, I'll use they. I don't know what the pronouns are. Um, they've got all of, not all of them but a, a good portion of the different gens. And um, I don't think they have the most recent ones because the game cycle for this that generation hasn't finished yet. And so they're waiting. Um, I, I love Pokemon. I'm a huge nerd. Um, I remember playing Pokemon back in the day on a black and white Game Boy. Okay, like that's age-wise where I'm at. I remember when the Pokemon games weren't even released in color. So, you know, aging myself a little bit, but it's fine. Um, this is on a easy count, 18 count Ada that I got from 123 Stitch. Honestly, looking back, I wish I would have gone a little bit smaller, maybe at 25, but oh well, I like 18 count. I like the coverage I'm doing two over one on this. And I actually am doing kind of a parking method on this piece. I'm working in diagonals, as you can see, it's a very predominant diagonal line here, um, by page, which is why it stops hard here. But I'm also doing color completion. So as you can see, I have doing all of one color. And if there was more up here, I would have gone further up. All of them color within the the ten square diagonal, and once I finish that color, if I have thread left, I'll park it in a square in the next diagonal, and then kind of do this. Oh, with a calcifer! I love this needle minder. It's so cute. Um, I love calcifer. Can't remember where I got it. I'll link it in the description box. This one's really pretty too. Get my face out of there. Um, that's from Adam Hart Designs. 
Adam Hart cross stitch. I can't remember. Again, I'll link it in the description box. But so, gentlemen, Pokemon, it's fantastic. And I made the Grime Guard on this. Um, did I say I started that on January 15th? I started it on January 15th. Um, the next one is a kit that I got um, on a trip to Cannon Beach. Cannon Beach is one of my favorite um, coastal towns in Oregon. It's beautiful. Um, it's just a nice little coast town. It's not super touristy like Seaside, but it still has a lot of stuff to do there. Um, it's actually in the Goonies, if you've seen the Goonies, and if you haven't, you should watch the Goonies. It is where they did the AT ATV race in the beginning, where the Vitellis kind of lose themselves with all the other ATVs. That was filmed at on Cannon Beach, because that's the only beach in Oregon where you can drive a vehicle. So this is called Haystack Rock Sunset. And it was a full kit that I bought at Cannon Beach. It's by Dorothy Designs. Um, and I don't know how old this kit is, but this is 1989 to 2022. Um, with those colors and this style, I'm gonna say probably the 90s, but it's fine. I love it. Um, it was a kit, but I'm not a huge fan of, like I said, the bigger Adas. So I, it came with 14 count, but I have a huge roll of 18 count white Ada that I got for super cheap. Um, so I used a piece of that, and this is where I'm at. See it very well. Obviously, I haven't done much of the orange, but yeah, it's fun. It's cute. I'm excited about it. It's gonna be tiny, but I'm not mad. So, all the stitches though, for how small it's gonna be. And this is actually that's with um, like this is the end. This is with seam allowance, so or whatever it's called. I don't know. I have the I've been sewing a while lately. Um, the next one is um, the Hoovian Stitch Along. So the Hoovian Sal. I'm sure that if you've watched any floss TV, you've heard that term before. If you haven't, Sal means stitch along. So it's when a group of people get together and they are stitching the same thing um, or something with a theme or something like that. So this is the Whovian Stitch, Stitch Along, um, Doctor Who, if you didn't know. Huge Doctor Who fan, like I said, I'm a nerd, but what are you gonna do? Um, so the Whovian Stitch Along was created by the Kosher Stitcher. I'm using post-it notes for all the information in case you were wondering why I keep looking all over the place. Um, by the, why did I toss it down? I don't even know. The Kosher Stitcher. Um, and this is the called for fabric, which is why I'm doing it on 14 count. Um, this fabric is gorgeous. I am like in love. And it is the colorway Out of This World um, by Grandma B. Wilden, one of my favorite designers. And I mean, I love her style. The Kosher Stitch is amazing too. Like, I mean, you can, you'll, as time goes on, you'll tell that there are a certain vibe that I enjoy with my stitching. Um, so, I mean, look at this material. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, I'm in love with it, but the stitch along. So here is the first, it's a mystery stitch along. So the first portion was the TARDIS, which I have done the top, like, not, not half, maybe third of, but it's the central motif. And I wanted to make sure to get at least the top portion done so I could do the next portion, which I have kind of started. Um, you can't really see it, but that's an adipose, which is probably one of my favorite aliens um, on Doctor Who. I freaking love adipose, they're so cute. 
And then there's going to be another adipose on the other side with handles, the Cyberman head in the middle. I'm not sure what the next motif is going to be in this um, stitch along, but it should, I think it comes out in a couple of days. I'm really excited. I love Doctor Who. I'm really excited about the new Doctor Who. Um, glad they didn't go back to a white man after Jodie Jody Whittaker. Um, the actor they've got to play Doctor Who for the next series is amazing. He's a phenomenal actor. I can't remember his name, but he was in Sex Education and just fabulous, amazing actor. Cannot wait. Um, and I will put a picture here of um, what those motifs are actually supposed to look like on the Hoovian cell. Um, yeah, later, I guess. I don't know. This is a mess. Um, the next one is probably the one I've been working on the most. Another thing to know about me is I am a huge Jane Austen fan. Um, I am actually going to the JASNA, which is the Jane Austen Society of North America, grand annual grand meeting in November in Colorado this year. And I, I cannot wait. It is going to be fantastic. Um, but onto my, onto the whip and enough of my chatter. This is a hundred ways to love by Plum Street Samplers. And this is a quote from Sense and Sensibility. It says, I suppose there may be a hundred ways of being in love. Cause I can't read backwards anymore. I've lost that skill. Um, I love this pattern. It's primitive, it's beautiful, and I can't wait for it to be finished. I am doing it on a 32 count rouge lush Belfast linen that I got from 123 Stitch. Um, that's actually pretty good, pretty true to color. Um, it's not a super pink, it's like a, a nice light pink. So you, you, I don't have, those hearts aren't filled in yet. That's why it's just a pink color. But the white, that's a color in cotton um, bamboo, I think. It kind of blends in. But once it's all outlined by the pink, you should be able to see it pretty well. Um, but like in those flowers, there's white and you can't even really see it. But it's fine. I love it. Um, I am using all of the called for on this, which I kind of wish I, okay, Weak Style Works, you all know the drama. Um, I didn't know the drama when I kitted this project and I found out like three days after I got it. So I'd already spent the money on the thread and I'm using it because I already spent the money on it before I realized all of the drama behind that and all of the issues. I will not be using Weeks Dye Works again. In fact, I kitted up a project at Acorns today and subbed it out. But I spent the money already and cross stitches is expensive, so I'm gonna use it. But I won't be buying it again. Um, the next one is called Thistle Crown by Ink Circles. And oof, this, I cannot even tell you. This color palette is my favorite, like ever. Sage green, purples, darker greens, like oof, I'm in love. Like my nails, gray, sage green, and purple. Um, I love this pattern. It's by Ink Circles. If I didn't say that, it's called Thistle Crown. Um, I am doing it on a... 40 count vintage country mocha Edinburgh Newcastle linen. Um, I haven't got a huge start on it. I just started it recently on April 7th, but it's beautiful. You can't really tell it's a dark green. And I'm using all of the Gloriana silks, which 
they're expensive, but oh man, oh man. They're wonderful to use. Um, I'm using all the call for colors, except when I went, when I kitted this up at Acorns, they were out of avocado. And they said that they had no idea when they were be, would be getting more in. So I asked them for help to find another color because I didn't really know exactly what avocado looked like. And we chose out iguana green instead. It's a little bit um, more green, a little yes, less yellow than the um, avocado color, but I actually think it works great. Personally, I like it better than um, the avocado that originally went in there. Um, well, last one. I, this one's in the hoop still because I was working on it earlier and I didn't feel like taking it out. But this is Greenhouse of Oddities, which I'll put a picture of the frame, I guess, because it's another cell. It just started. Um, it'll, no, May is when the next piece will come out. I can't remember. It started on the 14th and then we have six weeks until the next piece comes out. But so picture here and this, is what I've gotten done so far. Not a whole lot. I started center bottom. Um, this is my death moth needle minder. I thought it was appropriate. I got that from Mad for Minders. Link them in the bottom. Um, but I did a middle start because it was easier to, a middle bottom start because it was easier to count up from the middle or the bottom. Make sure you had that seam allowance. and work from there and then try and find the middle and down and whatever. So greenhouse of oddities, just the dirt. There's gonna be a little mole right here. It's the cutest thing ever. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, I started that on the 15th. That is another one by Lola Crow. She's actually from my local area, which I didn't know until recently. And her patterns are amazing. They're all got kind of a um darker vibe, I guess. I don't know. I love them. They're great. Totally my aesthetic. Um, but yeah, that is, oh, 36 count pearl gray Edinburgh linen that I got from Hall's Hands Creates on Etsy. It's great. I mean, I love it. It's got a really nice feel to it. Nice and clean. I think of my favorite linens that I have um, the, this one, I think is my least favorite. It has a super uneven weave, um, which is great for the primitive look on this. Oh, this one I'm doing one strand over two threads. Okay. So I'll explain it here. You see, it'll focus, um, the little threads running vertically through the material and horizontally through the material in linens and even waves that um, you count those to kind of decide how big you want your squares. So this is a, I'll use this one because I know what it is. This is a 32 count and um, you can kind of see the individual things on there. And so each thread, like box, there's 32 of them per inch. But most people will do over two. So it becomes a six, like a 16 count ETA basically. So your, your X's are the same size as a third um, 16 count ETA if you go over two because you're halving the count basically. Does that make sense? It probably doesn't. I may cut this part out or I may not, who knows? Anyways, this is probably my least favorite of my linens because it's so uneven. So my X's are on the uneven side, which like I said, is great for the primitive look and feel of this project. 
but for anything else, I don't know if I would love it. Um, and so yeah, my favorite linen is probably this Edinburgh linen because it's nice and it's it's even, but it's still got that rustic linen look to it, which I enjoy. I don't know. Anyways. Okay, so that's it for my whips. Um, I'm going to go grab my haul and I'll be right back. Okay, haul. So I went into Acorns and Threads this morning because they called me last week because a kit that I had been waiting for that they had been out of stock with finally came in. Um, and my kit is for the Adventure Sampler. Um, born and raised in the Northwest. How can I say no to that? Rain clouds, Bigfoot. I mean, look at it. Bendy Stitchy, Michelle, says that this little guy, it's a bear, looks like a wombat. And I haven't been able to unsee it ever since. Um, but yeah, okay. So, Adventure Sampler. I'm in love. And I ordered the kit. It is all done in the call for Be Stitch Me. I got the 32 count linen, 36 count, excuse me. Yes, and this is in the colorway Fall. And it's actually pulling really well. I'm impressed. Um, yeah, 36 count linen, Be Stitch Me linen in the um, colorway Fall. And then, it came with all of the He Stitch Me silks. Look at those colors, you guys. It's gonna look so good. Um, it also called for two non-silks. It called for, um, I substituted, Um, sampler threads in the colorway Ohio Sky for the week's dye works. Um, and then it calls for DNC B5200, which I don't have up here, but bright white, basic white. But yeah, so I'm really excited about this. I've been waiting for it since February, I think is when I put my name on the list to see um, when it came back in stock. But yeah, so that's exciting. Um, got a new pair of these little baby scissors. How cute are those? I've got a green pair that I got from 123 Stitch, but I needed another pair because I need scissors for all my project bags. Um, it's got a little detachable sheath that's, well, it's, it's attached, but it's rubber. They're cute. And then, um, so I, purchased the what's it called morbid curiosities cell by stitch crypt um just gonna be awesome victorian area era morbid curiosities i mean come on how it's gonna be great um i was thinking of going with a dark blue for that because that was what the um the designer used but purple is my favorite color and I saw this at Acorns and Threads. Look at that. Again, I don't know what it is about my lighting or my phone or what's happening, but I am getting gray color, accurate color pulls today. Look at it. It's got some pinks, some grays, some lighter portions. It's beautiful. So pretty. It is a 32 count Lugana from Atomic Ranch in the colorway Artemis. It is gorgeous. And I can't wait to start. That one doesn't start until May. It starts in May, I can't remember when in May, May 1st maybe? I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's it. So thank you for joining me on this crazy first floss tube. I may edit this a, a lot. I may just leave all the nonsense in. I haven't decided yet. 
Um, but thank you for joining me. I will go ahead and link all of the patterns and designers and all that fun stuff that I mentioned in the description box in the bottom. And yeah, have a wonderful day. Hope to see you again soon. Like and subscribe if you want to. If not, that's cool too. See you later.